Hey Janet, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. I'm uh, Sharana from Payer Weight. Um, it's interesting that you talked about, you know, advocating for Jeremy. Um, and in Hollywood, there's a lot of advocation, advocating for different communities in the show. And in this what if scenario of Hollywood, but I want to talk about your personal experience of how do you feel as, you know, your position in Hollywood now, how has that changed the conversation? Hmm. Um, yeah, you know, similar to, to um, Archie's arc, as well as Camille's arc, a lot of the advocating, you know, came from people with power and access, right? Um, specifically white folk with power and access. And so I think it's, um, for me, I'm deeply grateful to the fact that there was someone who was previously an outsider, Ryan, an out gay white man, um, who I think saw parts of himself and me and my journey and just kind of, you know, um, I think at first, you know, our story is very interesting because it's like he needed a black trans woman's voice in the writer's room for Pose when they were crafting the series. You know, it was created by three um, men who are not trans, who were writing the series that was centered around trans women. And so um, that's kind of how I came into the room. Um, and I think that, you know, having been such a presence in the trans community with my advocacy and, and, you know, my memoirs and stuff, it was a great fit. And for me, I didn't really have any, you know, sights on working in Hollywood in that way. I thought maybe the one thing that I would do would be to um, adapt one of my books for the screen, you know? Um, but I didn't really think that I'd be a writer, or director, producer in that kind of way. And Pose just shifted and changed my life. And I think how well received the first season was and the groundbreaking nature of that particular cast and Billy Porty, Porter's stardom and NJ Rodriguez's um, ability to be the center of a show in this way really just blew things up for all of us. And so I think what was great was that, you know, Ryan knew immediately as my mentor, um, he was like, you need to work on something that's not trans. So he then put me on the politician for an episode and I got an experience to stand on my own on a show that I didn't write, on a show that's about these rich white kids, you know, and I got to do something outside of my wheel, my outside of my sandbox and I got to go back to Pose and like supervise production in season two and kind of be the showrunner on set and, you know, really take a big chunk in a swing with being trusted with the se season finale, which was a big deal. Um, and I think all those little decisions, and of course, in my Netflix deal and stuff, I think um, the way that it hopefully reverberates through the industry is that we continue to empower people, non-traditional talent, um, to tell their own stories. Um, I think there's greater conversations, not just about who's in front of the camera and on the billboards, but actually who's actually putting the words in those people's mouths who's actually, who can they trust after a take is done to say, do you think we got it, Janet? Do you, and yes, baby, we got it, <laughs> you know, trust, you know, and there's just that innate sense of love and dedication and um, care that I think that I learned from my first season on Pose that has also graduated here. But I think that overall in the industry, we're having more conversations about, people care more about whose name is on the writing and directing list for an episode. Whereas I think before many people probably didn't pay att too much attention to who wrote the episode or who directed it. Um, it was enough to see our people on screen. And I think now we have higher standards with that. And so it forces the gatekeepers, the Avis Ambergs of the world, the Ryan Murphys of the world, the studio heads um, and development people to say, it's not enough to tell a story about a black person. Who's the black person writing it? Who's the black person directing it? And I hope that we just keep on pushing for those standards to be um, to be met. And just to follow um, up on that, you know, while watching this is really reminding me of Scotty Bowers and um, kind of the full service book that he wrote. And when we see the entrance of that gas station scene, you know, it immediately made me think of the documentary. And I wanted to know, did you talk to uh, Scotty in regards to his book, his experiences, since it seems the show really relies a lot heavily on kind of that sex worker aspect of it? We did it. We definitely took a lot of um, inspiration for um, Dylan McDermott's character, Ernie, um, when we were, we knew we wanted to be in that same similar space, right? We knew the gas station, we got inspiration from that. 
but then we spread Scotty's character across three of our main characters, the first three men that you kind of see on screen, which is Archie, um, who's the hustler, um, the aspiring actor in, in David's character, um, um, Jack, and um, Ernie, uh, played by Dylan McDermott. We, Scotty was such an interesting character that you kind of couldn't, you wouldn't believe it in real life <laughs> that this person could be so advanced in his thinking, so um, centered as a hustler, and like that's part of his identity, that he's always hustled people, even when he was a kid who had to go through abuse. Like it's so fascinating to have all that stuff. And then you have the tell-all nature of all the different kinds of stars um, who frequented the space. And so we did it because we weren't really telling Scotty's story. We always knew that it would just be a jumping off point, but we wanted to pay homage to all of those service people who were never given medals for doing the work that they do, which is life-saving work of providing a service for people who are forced to be underground in order to um, find love, affection, and touch, right? And so, uh, and sadly, Scotty had already passed by the time we thought of this idea for this series before Ryan and Ian, you know, created it. Um, but we definitely pay homage to, to him and we always, say that he was one of the many muses for this show in the similar way that Anna Mae Wong and Hattie McDaniel um, and Dorothy Dandridge um, and Rock Hudson are, are muses for us.